Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about what a solid angle is. We need to cover this concept as it will be necessary to understand the intensity of radiation which will be our next topic in this heat transfer course. So in this particular video we'll talk about what a solid angle is and what we can use it for as it does not only apply to radiation, there are tons of applications. If you remember back to your days in pre-calculus, you'll remember learning about angles and that the angle, which we can call the planar or plane angle, that being a simple 2D angle if you will, is equal to the arc length of your curve over the radius of the circle. Or alternatively, if you had two points in space, you could connect them through a right triangle and determine the angle between them through tan theta is equal to the distance between point B and C over the distance between points A and B. And remember that we can also represent these in terms of radians, which are just a description of angles, which are void of any fundamental units. So just a quick reminder for you, if you have one radian, then the radius of your circle is equal to the arc length of your circle, and a circle will have two pi radians. Just take note of this for later. Well, you can think of the solid angle as a step above what you previously learned about angles in 2D. That is, we are adding in another dimension and we are leaving the Cartesian coordinate system and are going to be going to the polar coordinate system, which is much more suited for our added dimension. So, as a definition, our solid angle is a 2D angle, but in a three-dimensional space. And this will become more clear later, so do not worry too much about this right now. I just want to quickly show you what exactly a solid angle looks like. And then let's slowly go through describing and deriving what everything in a solid angle means so that it makes sense to you. It begins at a point much like we had in 2D. However, as you can see, it is a three-dimensional cone growing outwards like so. So in the simplest of terms, we still have a radius. However, instead of an arc length, we now have an area. This angle about the vertex of our cone is a solid angle, and we denote it using an omega symbol. And it is characterized by not only one angle, but actually two. So there will be one from our z-axis, and then one from our y-axis. If you think about it, it should make sense though, as we would need two angles to define this line in space, as one angle would be too ambiguous. The solid angle is represented by steradians, which like the planar angle's radians, is just a way of characterizing the solid angle. So, much like the radians, one steradian, typically denoted as SR, is when the radius length is equal to the area. The solid angle is equal to either of these two equations here, and is related using this other equation here, which is basically the same thing we used to determine the radians previously, except now our arc length is an area, and we have two angles, theta and phi, Therefore, radius squared for our length. So, just as a note, in layman's terms, the solid angle is commonly used to calculate how much of an object is in a field of view of another. As a quick example, imagine a single point on the sun that is emitting radiation. Through a solid angle, we could determine how much of the Earth is in the field of view of that point. And through things like integration, this becomes very powerful. All right, so let's get into the derivation of the solid angle. To begin, let's draw a 3D axis to work on. Let's draw a super small area on our surface. Let's think of the surface as our sun, so it is a small area on our sun. Now, let's determine how much of the light coming from this little surface is going to hit the Earth, or this sphere located at some point in space. Well, you can imagine from our small surface area we could draw the solid angle, which starts at a single point on our sun's area of interest and grows with a circular end piece like so. All right, just as a quick recap, the solid angle is the amount of a surface that is in view of some source point. So for us, this will be the radiation from the sun to the earth. But the solid angle has many applications. So if you're watching this video and not interested at all in heat transfer, then whenever I say radiation, just think of whatever your quantity of interest is, whatever that may be but just know that the same math applies. So let's draw a little coordinate system above about our area. So we need to find the angles that describe the direction of our radiation surface to the sphere in space. Therefore, we begin by first drawing an angle between our origin point and the sphere. The angle created with the z-axis is our first angle, and we call this theta. 
Next, we project the center point of our sphere downwards and this creates the angle we call phi. These two angles actually have names as well. The theta angle from the z-axis is called the zenith, or sometimes the polar angle, and the phi is known as the azimuthal angle. As we just want to find a general equation, let's just observe a tiny and infinitesimally small element on our hemisphere that our radiation will hit, and we can denote this tiny section by the angles d theta and d phi. So, the infinitesimally small area of our hemisphere that our ray of radiation is hitting must be found. Let's call this small area DAH for the small hemispherical area. And in reality, this is the Earth that we are trying to track. The solid angle denoted by D omega for this small area is DAH over the radius squared. To get the areas of DAH, we need to find the lengths of these two sides. Let's call them side 1 and side 2. Side 1 can be found by tracing its two points back to the z axis. Therefore, side 1 is going to be r sine theta d phi, whereas side 2, denoted here, is going to be r d theta. Plugging in these newly found values to our infinitesimally small omega, our solid angle, we get that d omega is equal to sine theta d theta times d phi. Then, a double integration is necessary with respect to theta angle and then the phi angle. We could also rewrite this term using the equation here. And you get these two equations here, which are the ones we were talking about earlier. I'm going to link a video in the description below of a great example case that uses the above equation. So, if you're looking for a practical application of this newly derived equation, I recommend you check out that video. Thank you for checking out this video, and I hope it helped your understanding of what a solid angle is and how we can go about deriving the relevant equations for it. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.